everybody, it's your boy Nautical back at it with another video. So I wanted to talk to you guys about something really serious and I'm gonna take off my Xbox fan hat and just wear a hat in general. There is some things that need to be addressed when it comes to our thought process as being fans of the systems that we're fans of and understanding that when there is a problem, it kind of needs to be addressed and not just try to damage control our way around it. I've been completely at fault for some of this stuff that I'm about to actually say and defending um, a platform that I love and have enjoyed every minute of every platform I've had from Microsoft since Microsoft released their first system in 2001. But one thing has been certain and that is there will always be a Gears of War, there will always be a Halo, and there will always be a Forza. And I think Microsoft has really fallen into the trap that those games are all the Xbox platform is. I can tell you there are other games on the system, but the perception of everybody outside of the Xbox community is all you have is Halo, all you have is Forza, and all you have is gears. And I always wondered like, dang, all these other games like Crown and Break came out. We had Rise, we had Lost of Odyssey that came out on the 360, Blue Dragon, all these other games that were exclusive to the platform that no one even really thinks about anymore. And that's the point. The fact that nobody thinks of them. These are games that came and went in a fire of light and a rush of fury. They were here and they were gone. Some of them reviewed decently, other ones didn't do too well. And the one thing is Microsoft just didn't stick with them. And this article that I was reading, I'm gonna link it down in the description, it's from Gaming Boat, and it's titled, Why the Xbox One Hasn't Been Able to Achieve a Turnaround Like the PS3. There's one essential ingredient to success Microsoft seems to be missing. And I know what most people are gonna say, they're gonna say, oh my God, here's another fanboy, you know, up here trying to say that Microsoft don't have no games and this is the one thing they're missing. And honestly, even without even reading the article, you can already pretty much say that the one thing that's missing is games, cause that was the common denominator across all conversations and that all people that love other platforms always talk about games. It's nice to have the most powerful system, but you don't have the games to go with the most powerful system. And yes, one of the main analogies this person makes, and I make this in my own job when I talk to guests about which system they should have. And I always told them, if you have 90% of all the games that show up on both platforms between Xbox One and PS4, and then that 10% is gonna be the ones that are exclusive to that platform. And then really this comes down to the exclusive games you like. Do you like Halo? Do you like Gears? Do you like Forza? Or do you like Uncharted? Do you like God of War? Or do you like Killzone or Last of Us? Those are gonna be the determining factors on games that you like. Well, I kind of was shortchanging Sony on that regard because they have a lot more than just those three, four games. And just for conversation's sake, let's talk about the PS3. When it launched, it launched way more than the Xbox 360 launched for. It was a more powerful system than the Xbox 360. Yes, the 360 came out a year early. That's what helped it with its lead. But when the PS3 came out, it was way more powerful. But the one caveat to that was it was harder to develop for. It took a long time for developers to wrap their head around the cell processor to be able to get their games to run better on that system. And even four to five years after that system came out, people were still getting games that were completely broken on that system. If I remember correctly, games like Skyrim didn't even run right. And that game one came out in 2011, which was what, five years after the PS3 came out? The de facto best version of that game was on the Xbox 360. And Microsoft had that going for them. They came out with games like Lost Odyssey, Blue Dragon. Those were like games that they wanted to bring out to appeal to the JRPG side. People that wanted to play games like that or just the Japanese crowd in general because they were super invested in still trying to make it happen in Japan and we know where that ended up at. But PS3 never gave up on the games that came out with their system. Resistance Fall of Man was I believe a launch title for the PS3. Wasn't a great game, not at all. But guess what? We got three three of those, actually four if you count the Vita version. So they established a brand with that game. They didn't turn their back on it. They didn't say, well, it didn't perform the first time. We're not gonna keep putting more money into it. 
and that just gave them an extra game to fall back on so when resistance 2 came out and resistance 3 came out those were just extra first party games that they could just say we got more games than you and i'm gonna tell you like i always tell you the old adage is when gears of war came out one year it also every first party game that sony had but that was just one game Yes, it's really great to see one game outsell every other game that's on another platform that's exclusive. But the fact that the other system had five or six exclusives that came out during that one year. And just to bring some context to that, I want to link you to an article that was out in 2012. It was titled, Why Do Microsoft Exclusives Sell Better Than Sony Exclusives? And if you just want to follow along, I'll put it on the screen. It says, just last year, meaning 2011 that year, I guess, Gears of War 3 sold more copies than virtually every PS3 exclusive that released. That includes the masterpiece Uncharted 3, Resistance 3, Twisted Metal, Infamous 2, Motorstorm Apocalypse, and SoCon 4. While you may think that it's because there are more 360s in the world 67 million then ps3 65 million worldwide the number shows that this isn't the case so why do xbox 360 exclusives sell better than ps3 exclusives let's take a look at it so they go into a couple of different things they talk about marketing how microsoft does a lot of viral marketing for their games which they really did do in 360 they also talk about how less is more when you have one stellar game it's better than the sum of parts of a bunch of other games and they just talked about how xbox live is just the better platform platform to play multiplayer games on because one of the biggest features Xbox had party chat PlayStation did not so those are just some things that was in Microsoft's favor back in 2011 well let's just look at it in 2017 well marketing and advertising Microsoft doesn't have the head up in that no more Sony is spending more money or it seems like they're spending more money than ever before. They have third party marketing deals with most of the bigger developers and bigger games out there. Every game that's coming out this holiday pretty much is a Sony exclusive. Now, less is more. Now, that can still be one thing, less is more, but we also seen that by Sony sticking to all these games. So let's just take a real close look at the games that are on this list. Uncharted 3, well, they stuck with it and made an Uncharted 4. Resistance, they haven't brought that back since Resistance 3, but that was the third resistance game in the franchise twisted metal that was a reboot of the original they actually bring that back infamous 2 they actually came out with infamous second son that was a launch title for the ps4 so they stuck with that franchise motor storm apocalypse unfortunately the company closed and they haven't been able to make another game since and socon 4 same thing company closed haven't been able to make another game since but of the seven games that actually are listed there three of them saw long life in the franchise and that is basically a plus that's better than just one game like gears of war that you can get fatigue on you matured another two other platforms on top of the one that you were pushing the most which was uncharted and they didn't even add last of us to this because last of us was pretty much born out of uncharted when they finished uncharted 3 they turned right around and went into last of us which is probably one of the best games of the generation and now they're talking about a last of us 2 and then on top of the uncharted 4 that just released last year so sony has matured those franchises and microsoft has done the same thing with their big ones too but they just don't have enough of them and this is the problem that a lot of people are having when it comes to the conversation between games with microsoft and sony and i'm just saying as a gamer i want more from my system than just the same run in the mill three games that we always get i bought an xbox one because i love the community i love the friends that i got on xbox live and i love halo i cannot be without a halo game i played rise Sun of rome i played sunset overdrive so why isn't microsoft giving these games some stability you know after reading this article and actually just understanding what the person is talking about and i definitely want people to just go and actually look at the whole article don't just look at the title and just skim through it actually read the article because it makes a lot of sense and it definitely puts everything in perspective about what a lot of people are saying about the two systems i'm not trying to upset nobody on this i'm just being real when it comes to this conversation i'm trying to have with you guys my subscribers anybody that comes into my actual videos i love microsoft i just want them to be better this this conversation i'm having with you guys is something that i wish microsoft 
Microsoft were here so they can just understand that we're going to be here for the games that they have already. Those are the games that bring us here. What are the games that you're going to support long term that's going to keep us coming back? We can't always be playing the same three games and always use third party support to prop up our system to make it um, look better than the other one. Just because the games on the Xbox One X are going to look better and play better doesn't mean that people that are on PlayStation are going to leave PlayStation because yes, they may not have the most powerful system, but they still have more games and more variety in their games that we don't even have. If both systems play Call of Duty, Destiny, FIFA, and Assassin's Creed, will you pick that system or will you pick a system that also plays Horizon, Uncharted, Persona, and Bloodborne? When you listen to it like that, it really puts it in perspective. So you can play all these other games on top of the games that you already want the system for. It just gives you more buying options with that system. There's three things I always consider when I'm buying a system. First, where are your friends at? Well, mines are all on the Xbox platform mostly. I enjoy playing with those people. They're the reason that I play games as much as I do because I like having conversations with those people. I like just the camaraderie that we have just playing different games. The second thing is games. I can't be without a Halo game. I remember when they announced Halo Combat Evolve, I was giddy. I was gonna buy that game for PC. I went on and bought a Voodoo graphics card just for it. We found out it wasn't coming to PC, it was coming to Xbox exclusively. And I went on and just bought an Xbox because it was all about that game. That game is what got me into Xbox. Once I got to Xbox, the friend side took over and I value friends more than anything else now. So I owe Halo for the people that I know in my life now. Now, I'm not gonna say that Halo has been the greatest ever since then, but I still enjoy that game. I really do. And I just couldn't go into another platform knowing that I can't play Halo anymore unless they just stop making them. That is the one tie that I really have with Microsoft is just that one game. But that's just my opinion. And the last thing I always consider is just the feel of the system. I always gravitated to the Xbox platform just because of the offset thumbsticks. I just feel like it's more comfortable. I really hated the PS3 controller because it felt like a toy. Now the PS4 controller is a lot better. I really never get that controller a chance, but I will say playing the Destiny 2 beta on a PS4 Pro in that PS4 DualShock 4 controller does feel super nice, especially once you get used to it. So I just want to tell you guys that I really appreciate you watching this video. I know this is something that has been on my chest for the last day or so, just listening to the different videos and different comment sections and just trying to get an understanding of where people are coming from. That's the one thing that I always pride myself on is always understanding both sides of the fence. Now I will get down with people and talk mess with people that I feel are completely in the wrong, but when there is actually a story to be told and I feel like that story is genuine on both sides, I will literally split the middle and I we'll have the conversation to see exactly which one is best for us as a community. So this is my opinions, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I hope you guys still know that I am a huge Xbox fan. I am probably a fanboy at this point because I love the Xbox that much. And if it didn't get portrayed in this video, I don't know what else can do it. But I'm just telling you guys, I want Microsoft to do so much better and they have every opportunity to do it. This article is actually talking about how the Xbox can have that PS3 turnaround and be able to sell as many systems that it needs to, to just make its brand look a lot better. Because right now there's a bunch of negativity around our system and we need to cleanse that. We need to get that away from us because Microsoft has a lot of potential and we all know it as gamers, but we just need them to stick with the games that they actually put out. Make sure you like this video if you like the content, make sure you sub to the channel if you haven't. Turn on those email notifications, let you know the next time my video goes live. I appreciate you watching. You guys have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.